Thanks. I'll be fine. Okay, that was pointless, so then I decided to go and talk to the old lady again. I got the key. Thanks for your help, ma'am. I can show her these new items I have. I found this pass in Merlin's room. So, that deceitful little man is passing himself off as an electrician, is he? Uh-huh. This guy probably has a million faces. Hmm, I don't think she's going to be very useful. I found this matchbook in Merlin's bedroom. It came from the Club Alamut. It might be useful to find out if that club is in Paris, George. It would indeed, uh, but she didn't have anything else to say. Then I talked to the Nobel Prize winner guy again, and he had nothing to say, so then I decided to speak to the clerk again and taunt him that I have his key. What now, monsieur? Do you recognize this key? That is the property of the Hotel Ubu. Correct. May I ask how it found its way from the little hook to your pocket? I nicked it while your back was turned for that split second, and I'll do it again. Would you believe it was put there by a poltergeist? No, monsieur. The hotel is regularly serviced by an exorcist. If we had a ghost, Father Fécond would have flushed it out. Freak. I suppose you want the key back. Not especialement. The room is vacant. What? Since you are so determined to conduct your little investigation, I won't stop you. Being allowed to steal stuff takes all the fun out of it. Does this pass mean anything to you? That is Monsieur Merlin's property. <gasps> That's right. Merlin the murderer. I want to see what he's left in your safe. Impossible. I cannot betray his confidence, no matter what you say he's done. You're making a big mistake. Maybe. I can live with that. Why don't you just go and tell the police, George, then they can make the guy open the safe. So next thing I do is wander outside. But before I can get away... Just a minute, monsieur. What's your problem? No problem, if you cooperate. What do you want? Just a routine security check, nothing to worry yourself about. Oh, well, all right. Search him, Flap. You bet! The guy's name is Flap? Well, it suits him, I suppose. Hey, knock it off. Get off, you big ape. Get your hands off me, you damn dirty ape. Nothing, Guido. Zilch. Our apologies, monsieur. What? I ought to report you to the authorities. Randir, we are the authorities. You want I should break his arms? No. Let him go, Flap. Ah, ah, ah. And I went to the police station to speak to Sergeant Mew and Inspector Rosso, and after nearly 15 minutes of talking to them, realised it was completely pointless and boring, so I'm just going to fast forward through it all. Trust me, you don't want to listen to it. Although they do mention that the police investigation for the bombing has been officially closed for some reason. And then I realised all I had to do was show the old lady the pass card for a second time. Hi, ma'am. Hello, George. What can I do for you now? You can move the story along, please. That gangster I told you about? He went through my pockets just now. Good heavens! One never knows what to expect in foreign parts. Thank you for the warning, young man. I shall hide my credit cards in my underwear. That's just so she'll get felt up. Would you like to keep Merlin's pass as a memento? No, darling. My broken heart is reminder enough. I showed the pass to the clerk, hoping he'd give me Merlin's papers. But he wouldn't buy it. He's too scared. I'll give him something to be scared of. Follow me, George! Well, if you shout at him with that shrill voice, I'm sure he'll do anything you say. I think George has found a good partner there. They both like harassing people that are just trying to do their jobs. Did you place a package from Merlin in the hotel safe? I did, madame. And did my friend here show you Merlin's identification? Indeed he did, but... What's the problem? He isn't Merlin. Well said. A mere academic detail. Give him the package. What? But that is against the law. I happen to be a justice of the peace, you silly man. I am the law. I am the law! If he tries anything, shoot him, George. My pleasure, Lady Piermont. 
Now, I don't know the French legal system very well, but I'm pretty sure that pretending to be a policeman and threatening to shoot someone is probably frowned upon. You know, I haven't enjoyed myself this much since Greenham Common. I don't know what I would have done without you, Lady Piermont. Well, I wouldn't have needed to buy these earplugs, that's for sure. Voila, monsieur. Le manuscrit de Monsieur Merlin. Uh, sure, whatever. Thanks. How satisfying. An Anglo-American alliance that actually worked. The clerk had given me a tightly rolled sheet of parchment. I decided not to unroll it until I was safely back in Nico's apartment. That's surprisingly clever of you, George. And as always, I'll just give it a little examine. It was the ancient manuscript which Khan had stolen from Plantau. And now I'll just casually walk out of the hotel and take it back to Nico's place for analysis. Hold it right there. Search him again, Flap. His big gorilla hands groped my junk in a manner that was embarrassingly not unpleasant. Is this what you're after, Guido? See. Si. That's it. Shit. I can explain everything. Well, almost everything. Too late. You're on your way to feed the fishies. I'm allergic to fish. I, I break out in blotches when I eat tuna. Let's go. Let's go. Sometime later. They killed me. The first of a handful of ways you can actually die in this game. And here's the death screen, nothing special about it, but you have to start all the way back at your last save. So I had to play through all that crap again just to get back to here. This is the point where I walked out the front door, but you actually have to go up the stairs. Of course, there's no way you'd actually do this unless you walked out the front door first and got killed, but whatever. The door was locked. Oops. It's a good thing that clerk didn't want the key back then, isn't it? So, George, what did you do on your vacation in Paris? Well, I wandered in and out of hotel rooms for about an hour. That was pretty cool. Time to jump out the window. I'd rather die than see the manuscript end up in the hands of those hired goons outside. Only joking. You actually have to throw the manuscript into the alleyway. And apologies for the sound here. It's just the game being crappy again. I knew this was no way to treat an ancient manuscript. But I couldn't let it fall into the hands of the goons waiting outside. So throw it as hard as you can into the little stream of water then. Then we have to go all the way back downstairs and out the front door. I actually kind of like the piano sped up. Just what I always dreamed of, going back in time to be molested again. Hold it right there. Search him again, Flat. As his manly hands caressed my body, I involuntarily got a twitch in my thingy. Nothing, Guido. Okay, let him go. Haha, -ha, I outwitted some idiots. Now let's just go around the back and retrieve the manuscript. If he really wanted to be careful about throwing the manuscript out the window, he could have got Lady Piermont to help and lower it down on some string or wrap it in his jacket or something. If the manuscript was what Flap and Guido were after, they were going to be disappointed. I couldn't wait to get back to Nico's apartment and check it out. Are you sure you don't mean check her out, George? What will the manuscript reveal? Will George finally get a date with Nico? Will Lady Piermont conceive Merlin's love child at the age of 82? Find out in the next episode. Same bat time, same bat channel.